And what's up, people? It's your boy, Billy Mac. I'm finally able to do some reaction videos. I'm still working on learning how YouTube's like, policy is, their copyright policy is for reacting to videos. I have my answer, but I just, I just don't, I don't want to get, I don't, I don't want copyright claims to hit my videos. But anyway, this is more of a test run. I'll let y'all know in a future video if it works out or not, but let's hope for the best. But anyway, first reaction video, 2022, we doing the damn thing. First video I'm going to react to, this is from um, 105.3 The Fan in Dallas, Texas, re reacting to Sean and RJ, um, questioning if the Cowboys organization is overhyped. Or should the cowboy or are the cowboy players in the organization overhyped? It's a lot to say very fast in five minutes. So let's let's see what it is. We have we have, I do believe, overrated a lot of the talent on this team. Um I just think that part of what made what makes this team the Dallas Cowboys America's team is the hype machine that it is. Uh, there's a lot of hype that goes into this team. The players that are drafted are usually players that are they're, they're good quality football players. Uh, but then again, when you put them on this team on this stage with this platform, they become bigger than maybe they should be. And the expectations grow to a point that maybe they shouldn't grow to. And, you know, the thing is, they say the Dallas Cowboys are New England South. The only difference is we don't have the Super Bowls. Isn't it funny that when players leave New England, they're not quite as good as they were in New England? Bill Belichick is a great evaluator of I guess his his players, and so when they leave New England, they rarely have careers after. Don't I can think of Danny Amendola had he he was able to have longevity after he left New England. Um, I think it was Martellus Bennett, or or his brother Mar was is his brother's name Marcellus or Marcus. One of the the tight end brother, I think he his career continued after he left New England. Um, and that, is, that list is very short, and with the Cowboys, it's kind of the same way. Once they leave the Cowboys, we don't hear too much about them. I think of recent free agents. I think of Byron Jones. He had one good year in Miami. Never heard from again. Um, of course, we ran DeMarco Murray out of a career. He went to Tennessee, but he was never the same. Um, trying to think. Patrick Creighton, I, I think he went to Jacksonville and was trash. I mean, there, there's a, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but, you know, like I said, the only difference is no Super Bowls. You know, th this whole notion that, well, you know, we're the Dallas Cowboys. We have higher expectations than that. It's, it's no, that's crap. Yes, based on this past weekend. You know, the, the Dallas Cowboys are closer to, to the Cleveland Browns than they are to the Green Bay Packers. The, 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 when you look at all the teams, the longest droughts in playoff history, or, or, or currently in the postseason. We're on the list with Washington and with um, uh, with Detroit and, and Cleveland wrong. and I, Cincinnati. I that the other day. The Cowboys have now gone 11 straight playoff games. Which have, the Cowboys have gone 11 years of making the playoffs and not getting to the NFC Championship. 
that is by far the longest street. And you and I know some of y'all are thinking to yourself, well, what about Detroit and Cleveland? Detroit and Cleveland hadn't made the playoffs that many times. That's why it's staggering. We have literally made the playoffs 11 times since in the past 25 years and have not gone to the NFC Championship game. It's the worst record out of everybody. And the Chargers, like we're on that list. We're not on the list of Green Bay and Pittsburgh and New England. We're not on that. We're not. We're not anywhere near that list. So you know, I think part of what Jerry does, uh, to the detriment, is inflate the expectations because of the hype that he has and the hype that this team has. Yeah. Now, is it his fault that they're overhyped? No, it's probably not his fault. But, I mean, he is the owner. Like, the owner is going to get all the... I mean, it, well, if you put the team in the spotlight I mean, all the time, they're going to be hyped. About this yeah. After the game. It, there's a level of, like, privilege that the Dallas Cowboys have, that the players have on the Dallas Cowboys. And it's getting old. It's getting, it's getting old. It's getting old. They think they've won the Super Bowl before the playoffs have even started. You know what I mean? And I I I listen. I'm I am guilty of buy, buying into the hype too. But like I said in my review with the 49ers game, one team one team was ready to play and the other one just seemed like they was just there. Yeah. But what are you going to do? Not put them in the spotlight? Right. Like, you know, and, and I think you know the the other thing is like you know, do we hold like we, we we never we always put the blame on around here? I think and I think a lot of places do it anyway. But with this team, the the blame is always at least since I've been here. I'm I you know I started working here in two thousand two. The blame was always placed on the coach. It was Bill Parcells who was antiquated? Oh, Wade Phillips, players coach. Oh, Jason Garrett's a moron. Oh, Mike McCarthy's a moron. It's never the players. And I, but but who's know, not blaming the players this time? Oh, I mean, how much how, how much have we talked about? We have spent a majority. I I we spent a majority of this week talking about the coaching. The coaching did prepare them. The coaching did this. The coaching did that. But, you know, instead of blaming the players, um, and, and I just look at it and it's like you know. I think the media in this town and the fans are so starstruck by the athletes that they don't want to put the blame on them. I saw, I, I said a story last week, the A-Rod story. You remember this with the, with the penthouse? Yeah. There, he was trying to buy a penthouse in New York and they wouldn't let him move into the building. They're like, no, we don't want you here. We don't want this. Do you think there's a apartment complex in Dallas, He's Fort Worth? Right. He's very right. Yeah, I mean, now, now, here's the thing about it. There's a level, that level of royalty, you, you'll you get that in Green Bay also. But it's more like family. From from listening to Brian Broaddus, it's more like a family atmosphere. Aaron Rodgers goes to the grocery store. Everybody's like, hey, Aaron, how you doing? Go get him, go, go get him this weekend. And Aaron's just like, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, we'll take care of business. In Dallas, yeah, you're a freaking celebrity. You're a freaking celebrity. And and maybe we might need to have a Philadelphia mindset because Don, if, if Donovan McNabb, like that very last year, he was in Philly and he lost when he lost to the Cowboys in the playoff game. If if Donovan McNabb was trying to buy some property in Philadelphia. Yeah, they would have been like, no, nah, bro. No, nah, bro. No, nah, you can't come up in here, bro. <laughs> I don't know how Philadelphians talk, but that's just my that's just my regular accent. But, you know, Donovan McNabb probably has to pay for a cheesesteak in Philadelphia. <laughs> it just is what it is. That would tell somebody of his stature, you cannot move in here. No, there would be a line out the door, Absolutely. a bidding war to get them to move in. We're starstruck by the athletes, which means 
we're less likely to put the blame on them and more likely to put it on and the coach or the general there's manager. There's a level of, there's a level of, I truly believe that there are a lot of, that there will be a lot of players in this. Look at Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders, to some, is considered the greatest running back. Other than Jim Brown and Emmitt Smith, he is considered the greatest running back ever. But he never had an offensive line. And technically, it should be on the GM and or the coach to either scheme the offensive, the running plays to where he has open holes or the GM to draft well and bring in free agents that can block for Barry Sanders. And apparently they didn't do that in Detroit. I ought to ask my boy Sam what that was all about because he's from Detroit. He's a Lions fan. But it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I, so there is a, that's why we blame the GM and the coach because it's like if your team is this talented, why aren't they doing talented things? Why can't they win these games? There's, there, you know, it just, it's a culmination of things, but maybe we do need to start blaming the players some. I mean, Dak is getting destroyed. He's been destroyed. Yep. What, what, ha what ha and obviously Kellen and, and McCarthy are getting crushed. What happens on Monday is you're going to look at, you know, the, the game and what, what happened with the number one reason that they lost that football game was 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 penalties or the top two reasons penalties and they got beaten up like i've been saying for years uh minnesota dalvin cook denver this team is a little bit soft defensively and they get pushed around and beaten up so they lost in the first half because of that and overall stupidity with 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 penalties so i i think the the, the penalties and dax play have yeah, gotten called out uh Penalties is coaching. That 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 to me is ninety percent coaching. Ten percent of it, it. If you want to blame players for penalties, that means you have a dumb football players on your team. If you want to blame them for penalties, that means you have some dumb football players on your team. And yeah. We, you have to look back and say, what do we overrate? We overrated the offensive line. We may have overrated the receivers. Like we we're going to have to have a lot of CD Lamb discussions uh, in this off season. He was the cho he was the next chosen one. Uh, we overrated Kellen Moore probably early on. We overrated I mean, we Diggs. Overrated we overrated because we finally thought we was going to get get out of that meat and potatoes type of offense and get into some flashiness, but. We got into the flashiness earlier, but as the season winged on, it started looking like Jason Garrett again, who he's a product of. Did Gregory, but I don't blame Jerry for any of that. This is still a really good roster of talent. Were they were they were they Super Bowl ready? Uh, obviously not. What I worry about with Jerry is not the hyping, it's 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 culture. it's the culture. I, I I worry when Mike McCarthy blames the referees or when the Cowboys have 15 penalties, if Jerry goes off or he spins it like he does with us on the radio. Oh, well, other teams have game management issues. I wonder if Jerry cracks well, heads. Of course he does. Or like what? What? That that's the reason why we all blame Jerry Jones is because he's not going to go in there and be like, now, nah, y'all, now, now. We need to win this game. I don't, I don't understand what the f is going on here. It's a football game out there. We got a playoff game. I'm trying to fill seats in that. I'm, put, I'm trying to put butts in those seats. Y'all want to go to a Super Bowl? I want to go to a Super Bowl. Do y'all not, not want to play? But the point is, Jerry Jones is not going to cost a contract. He's not going to put no money on the line. That's the problem. See, Jimmy Johnson, he'll cut you in a second. Oh, you, oh, you wanna you wanna come late to a meeting? 
Oh, oh, you, oh, you want to come late to another meet? Oh, oh, you just not going to, you just, oh, so now you don't know how to play football? We'll see you, we'll, we'll see you back in Dallas. Go on, go on, go on, get back on the bus. We'll see you back in Dallas. Oh, and by the way, when you get to Dallas, go ahead and clean out your locker. We don't need you no more. That was Jimmy Johnson. Jerry Jones is not going to do that. And now he's not going to hire a coach that can do that either. Jerry looks at the state. Did we get an extra 10,000 in the stadium? Uh, are, are we good in terms of COVID? You know, how many jerseys were sold? So Jerry does care about that stuff as he should. I, I would just like to know, and he would come on here and say, you have no idea how much I care and the check I would write and blah, blah, blah. But why didn't he get fixed then? Did you do your part as the general manager to try to get some of these things fixed in terms the of how undisciplined your team was? But any NFL team to do, and Falcon fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. The hardest thing for NFL teams to do, especially owners and GM, is to admit that a player ain't got it no more. That a, that a certain position group is not playing well. They, 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 they continue to tell themselves everything's going to be all right. Or everything's going to be just fine when in actuality it's not. Does Mike McCarthy ever get chewed out by the general manager? What the hell are you doing? What's going on with the offense? Is Kellen Moore the chosen one? Or did Jerry bring him in and say, yo, man, what's wrong? You got way too many pieces here. So I just worry about Jerry uh, getting upset with people in the building or whether he just spins it all positively like he does on the radio because he doesn't come across a lot of times very ticked off and frustrated. Obviously, that's going to be different than behind the scenes, but I don't know I don't know how mad and angry that, I mean, he gets. That, that is true. We really don't know how, how angry Jerry gets with the team and how they play on, on a daily basis behind closed doors. Um, but one thing's for sure. I mean, he's in charge and until he presents himself in a way to where he means business, I think this is, and this is why I've said in other videos, things are not going to change until Jerry Jones either retires or kicks the bucket. Unfortunately, in my opinion. For, yeah, for, 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 for them to continue to allow this team to whine and point and cry about the referees when you didn't come anywhere near playing your best against the Raiders, against not Arizona. Time, maybe the Raider game, but not one time during the season and I say to myself, oh, the referees, it was the referees' fault. Not one time. I could see if, like, you played a magnificent game and you got screwed by one call, but, like, the Cowboys got outplayed in those games. That's, that's three instances, including Sunday. And did Jerry ever go to McCarthy and say, I, I don't, or in the team meeting and say, I don't want to hear y'all one more time talk about the referees when you play like that. I don't want to hear it one more time. That's what I worry about in terms of Jerry enabling. That's my Jerry blame. I Look, I, I don't know that he would say that. I don't know if he even could say that. I mean, he could, but like whether, like, can you control what your players say to the media? So I guess you could. It's difficult. Some are going to go rogue. Um, you know, they take the lead from the leader. Jerry controlled them standing or not for the national anthem. I, yeah, I know. I, I, don't know. I, I don't know how he did it. He did. Uh, I think here's a good text from Scott and Ennis. People don't want to blame players because it doesn't offer a solution. Yeah, that's a quick that, fixes. Hey, flip a button, true, change the code. And that's another great player because you got to pay him. Or I should say you can fire the player, but you still got to pay him. That's money on your books. And I think the Cowboys are already not doing well with the cap this season. I think we'll do better next season, but this, or at least the 2022-23 season, we're not going to do so well with the cap. That's why I'm not even – I'll be shocked if we make the playoffs next year. If we make the playoffs, it's because the NFC East. Great point. That, that that's, that's a great point because, and Matt Gangle said this years ago, what are you going to do, fire the player? You can't. 
Yeah. You can't in a cap league like this. Randy Gregory, should he have been benched at some point in time in that in that game? What are you going to do? Money dictates. Why is Zeke still on the field versus Pollard? Money dictates. You can't just cut because of cap ramifications. You're stuck with the player. Everyone keeps tweeting me. What would you do with Dak? What would you do? What? what, what? N nothing. You're not doing anything. I'm not ready to give up on him right now anyway, but you, you cannot cut him. You just can't do it in a cap league. And look, there's a reason that the title is called head coach. The head coach is going, fair or not, what did what was the Jason Garrett line yesterday that Hellman said? It comes with the dinner. So that's the way it is. Uh, you're the head coach of the Cowboys. That's what's going to happen. But this was still, did we overrate it? Yeah, in some areas. Uh, but we underrated I, I Micah Parsons. Very upset. Uh, Micah Parsons. Very upset. And I was wrong. We underrated, you know, before the season, what Diggs was going to be. There's a really good football team in terms of the talent. Uh, so uh, Jerry, Steven, whoever picks him, Will McClay, I think they deserve credit for that. I mean, where's this team? Yeah. Where, where, where are true we? We can say are these guys elite in certain areas. Where Offensive are the true line. weaknesses of this football Offensive team? Line. Possibly the interior of the defensive line, it seems like. Linebacker, offensive line, shall I go on? And kicker. Like a a blatant weakness. We said D tackle before the year. We said secondary, the other corner secondary spot. Showed up this year. We some all linebacker secondary was gonna be trash, but they showed up this year. Play and now offensive line. The offensive line, you know, a a ditch is 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 the offensive line completely hold you back? I don't know, but and then, you know, and, all and around and in a cap league. Thing this is, was a very I said earlier, I didn't overrate the offensive line. I was mad with the Micah Parsons pick because Rashawn Slater was sitting right there. And I didn't care how I don't care about Tyron. I, I think like a GM. I didn't care about Tyron Smith's pride and, and and his loyalty to the team. Bruh, you haven't played a whole season since 16. I think 16. You haven't played a whole season since the last time I can remember. We need somebody that can come in, take over. That was a, getting Rashawn Slater was a depth type of move it wasn't it wasn't a slight slight at tyron smith it's just bro we can't rely on you the best ability is availability that's nfl 101 very good roster where's the weakness in this team sean take your index finger point it to your head there you go oh what football iq you see, there's your weakness the oh series. but see i don't think it's football iq i think it's the culture. I don't think we have dumb players. I just think they're so they're so used to being coddled and they're so privileged to be Dallas Cowboy players that for them, it just, the, the games don't, it's, it's not, you know, they don't need to try. We don't need to try that hard, guys. We're, we're the Dallas Cowboys. We're the Dallas Cowboys. The simple fact, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is not a bad quarterback. He's a decent quarterback, but he's not a bad quarterback. But all of a sudden, they get Tom Brady. Now, all of a sudden, they have the best O-line in the league. They have the best defensive line in the league. They have the best linebacker in the league. They have one of the best secondaries. They have the best receiving core. It's like, wait a minute. So one player made y'all that great? No. Y'all were always there. Y'all just didn't feel like playing for Jameis Winston. Or y'all just didn't believe in Jameis Winston. <laughs> I mean, look, there's not a whole lot of holes. Carol. There's not. Uh, mind. You know, like... <laughs> 
By the way, McCarthy, end of season presser at 2 o'clock today. The Cowboys just announced that okay. right here on the fan. You know, their de- you know, it's funny. Their defense is kind of like the organization as a whole. Their defense this year. It was flashy. Um, yep. But it necessarily didn't do the little things all the time. Like, you know, they weren't great in coverage. They made a lot of turnovers. They forced a lot of turnovers, but they weren't great in coverage. Right? They gave up a ton of yards after the catch. Was it the most in the league? Second most in the league, yards after catch? So it was weird, right? It was, it was, it was, it was different. But there's not a lot of holes on this team. And that's good. Uh, you know, one thing they do have is they've got a good quarterback who is not a, a game changer. He's not Patrick Mahomes. Um, you know, but, but again, nobody is. Nobody is. Can you win with him being as good as he is right now? Uh, and the answer is yes, but he's got to do that in a career year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is this organization is overhyped. And, um, you know, I was doing some thinking. I think as fans, I doubt this will happen, but I think as fans, I think we just need to be spectators next year. And I'm, I'm serious about it. I think we just need to be spectators next year. We just need to, if, if, you, go, if you go to AT&T Stadium, just have a seat and just watch football. Just eat your popcorn. Oh, they scored a touchdown. They, I don't care if they win 100 to 3 against whoever the eventual Super Bowl winner is. It's like, that's nice. That's nice. Do it in the playoffs. Do it in the playoffs. We as fans have, start, have got to start holding this team to a higher standard, in my opinion. But... YouTube algorithm was going to kick my behind because we're going on 30 minutes. <laughs> but it's a good video. Shout out to 105.3 The Fan, Sean and RJ and Troy. I try to listen to them every day. I try to listen to them, KNC Masterpiece. I, I, G-Bag is my show because of Brian, simply because of Brian Broaddus. But I've become a Jeff Kavanaugh fan. Shout out to Lucius Alexander. Hope you get hope your hope your uh, ankle gets feels better, bro. But um, that's it for that's it for this video. Hopefully it doesn't get shut down. Uh, hopefully I don't have nobody come after me, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> but it's your boy Billy Mac. Thank y'all for watching this with me, and I'll holler at y'all next time.